I think everybody knew that digital transformation was going to need to happen. Um, there's just too many things that you can do with data. And, and, and I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the driver for, you know, the next industrial revolution for the next, you know, 15 to 20 years. So I think that we, we always knew that that was going to happen. I just think that COVID radically, you know, made us speed up. There's no excuses for kind of dragging our feet anymore. A Far Eastern Group is one of Taiwan's oldest conglomerates. You know, part of its long-standing success comes from stability. Uh, and you're, you know, not necessarily the group is, is keen on risk-taking or over-investing or high-growth ventures. Your businesses are kind of in, in the middle of the pack. As a chief innovation officer, how do you innovate in that kind of environment? <laughs> Very carefully. You have, to, you, you have to pick your battles. Innovation can kind of seem like it's on the opposite end of the spectrum. When you actually are using the design process properly and actually um, incorporating it into your business, it actually reduces quite a bit of risk. I don't see stability and innovation having to be separate. I think that they can be, they, they can be, they can go hand in hand if properly executed. Out of all the industries that, that and companies that you have under the group, which areas do you think are, are ripe for disruption? Is, is there something in particular that's on the top of your list now? With 5G and, and, and telecommunications and the effects of COVID and digitalization, I think that our telecom industry is going to become much more important. Not only the connecting of, of and digitizing of all of, you know, Taiwan's uh, industries, but also I think, you know, it's, it's the gateway into uh, like emerging fields, um, like, like artificial intelligence, like edge computing. And one of your projects uh, that you spearheaded uh, is part of your shipping unit, Yuming Marine, uh, partnering with Ericsson on a new digital fleet management platform using IoT con connectivity. Can you tell us a bit more about this technology? Global warming and climate change has made uh, the overall shipping environment much more dangerous. We just took some of the lessons that I learned from the Marines, some of the lessons that I, used, I learned from being on the FET board, and we used that to kind of digitize our operations and focus it a little bit more on safety and using data, using artificial intelligence to help improve our situational awareness of our fleet. And so it's as a result of that, you know, it's paid off dividends, you know, in helping us lower our fuel costs, be more sustainable, and also improve this overall safety and operations of our fleet. So Jeff, you have a very unique background. After a short stint in finance, you all of a sudden decided that you wanted to join the, the military. You, you were a lieutenant for the U.S. Marines. You, you served in Iraq as well. You've been to design school. It, it seems just so interesting to, to hear someone in, in your position want to enlist. What was the motivation behind that? Basically, I wanted the leadership experience that you get given when you're when you join the Marines. I mean, there's there's uh, there's very few jobs out there that will when you're only 26 years old, put you in charge of 50 Marines and, and you know, millions of dollars worth of equipment um, and let you go out and, and kind of try, try and change the world. I had something to prove to myself. You know, I wanted to get through that obstacle on my own. It was kind of a family tradition to do military service. And so I didn't want to let that tradition die. And your grandfather, uh, Xu Yuxiang, the founder of the, of the group, he instilled prudence as a, as a defining characteristic of FEG. And, and your father, Douglas Shu, he added a little bit more of that Western style innovation. And you kind of are a little bit more of the East meets West sort of philosophy as well. Tell us what sort of lessons have you learned uh, from your family? If you want to create something great and meaningful, you have to work hard. You know, my dad, he was always working. I knew that my dad was always focused on generating his business and making it stronger. And he was also focused on, you know, trying to give back to Taiwan. And so that didn't leave a lot of time for him to spend with us and in, 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 in my family. And so I also knew that 
you know, if I wanted to, to learn, you know, and get my leadership experience, I needed to go out and find it on my own. How do you see your role evolving within the group, let's say for the next five to 10 years? Whether or not I, I come up and whether or not I take the leadership in position is, is still judged largely on, on um, what I'm able to contribute. It, it, nothing is going to be handed to me on a silver platter, so I'm still going to have to earn my place. The chairman has given me the, a, a position in which I can drive innovation forward, and that, and that still, at the end of the day, is, is my passion. You know, applying the design process to complex problems, finding solutions, and help, you know, kind of transforming and elevating the group companies so that they can, they can last another 70 years. I know that it's, it's not going to be easy, but it's, you know, I think it's, it's a meaningful and worthwhile challenge. So, I, you know, as long as I can keep going down this road, I will be here as long as the group requires me to be here. What do you want to do next, Jeff? I want to get us through this kind of dark time right now that we're going through with COVID and, and the new norm and, and trying to figure out what the new normal is. But then I also want to, you know, kind of pursue my own ambitions of, you know, um, empowering the group, developing our, our technology companies and, and, and also kind of helping our old businesses kind of reinvent themselves because what, what works over the last 70 years might not be what's going to work for the next 70 years. And so, you know, have to help, help, help those companies make that change transformation.